Hey, everyone, and welcome to the Love America Hate Taxes podcast. I'm here with Don Rasmussen, and today we're talking about issues with vacation homes as rental property. So there's um, there's really two things that you can have here, two definitions we're going to look at first. Uh, one is what is a personal residence, and the other one is what is a rental uh, property. Vacation property, property. Vacation yeah, for property. sure, yeah. yeah. So uh, the reason why I wanted to bring this up is I actually had a client in here last week. Him and his wife came in. Uh, some local doctors, and they want to take uh, some money and um, get a vacation house or a beach house particularly. Mm -hmm. So they were asking these questions about, you know, is this a personal residence or is this a vacation property and what the the rules are from a tax perspective. So if you are going to use this property, okay, for greater than 14 days a year, there's two tests, then it's a personal residence. If or if you let's say you rent it out for 240 days a year, to other people, and you use it for 25 days of the year, so that's 265, mm -hmm. because you exceeded that 10% mm -hmm. of the uh, commercial use of it, now it becomes a personal residence. So. Gotcha. Okay, um, and, and so for the rental property, it's the, kind of the inverse of that, correct? Exactly, this, yeah. Yeah, exactly. So if you aren't using it uh, 14 days or 10% of the rental days per year, so in my example, um, let's say I use it for 14 days, uh, or I use it instead of on that 240 example, I only use it for 21 days. Now it's a mm -hmm. vacation property because the majority of the time, mm -hmm. uh, more than 90% is being used for uh, rental. Gotcha. Now for rental properties, um, what about the mortgage entry, interest deductions that come along with that? Yeah, so on a per, if it's a personal residence, of course, you go to your Schedule A and just itemize it like you would mm -hmm. on your, your own residence that you have currently. So all that applies over on that side of it. If it moves over to the vacation side of it, you're going to have mm -hmm. actually two entries. One is going to be your personal use of that is going to go out uh, of, of the portion. So if it's 10%, so 10% of your mortgage interest, your taxes, stuff like that's going to be able to show up on your own personal Schedule A. But the rest of it's going to go on a Schedule E. A Schedule E is like a rental property. So if you had a uh, VRBO or some other type of rental house or uh, office or whatever the case is and you own it, that goes on to Schedule E. And that's where you run the rent, your expenses, and so on and so forth. And then you may have some money at the bottom. Gotcha. So one of the other things that... You know, I think it's beneficial here is the real estate, what is a real estate professional and how does this apply for these rental homes? Yeah. So, mm -hmm. so one thing I wanted to share earlier is that if you have a loss, mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> yes, that question. Mm -hmm. So if you, if you have a loss, so let's say for example, your uh, rent that's coming in from your rental property is $10,000 a year, but all your, your mortgage interest, your taxes and everything else is $20,000 a year. So you have a $10,000 loss. That's called a passive loss. Okay. Passive loss can only be offset by passive income, which comes from rental properties or activities that, that you're not um, materially involved in. So um, that being said, you have to have create enough rental income to offset that. Now, it carries forward. So if I can't mm -hmm. use it this year, we'll carry forward next year. And, of course, the whole idea is to make more money than what you're spending. Mm -hmm. Okay. But... If for some reason um, you have, let's say, one property or multiple properties and you are um, spending at least 750 hours a year involved in managing, maintaining, and all that type of stuff in that property, you can actually qualify as a real estate professional. Awesome. Now, the good news is you don't have to go take a license exam for that. Mm -hmm. um, it's just you have to document. I had a client in Virginia here a couple, two, three years ago. He had about six or seven rental properties. And so I, I just made sure, and actually we had his wife as a real estate professional in this particular case, document everything they're doing. Everything they're doing with that house, collecting rent, going by, you know, maintaining it, whatever the case is. Because you have to make sure that if you're going to go down that path, okay, you don't, and if you're ever audited, you want to make sure that you got your T's crossed and your I's dotted. But it cannot be, it has to be more than your other work hours. So mm -hmm. let's say, for example, I, you know, there's 2,080 hours a year in, in a 40-hour week mm -hmm. in a year. So if I'm spending 750, that means I'm spending my other, mm -hmm. what was that, 13, 1,400 hours somewhere else doing something else. Yeah. All right. So that means that I could not qualify. Now, my wife, mm -hmm. who's a stay-at-home and she does some work and, you know, um, as long as she is spending 750 hours 
managing our real estate portfolio and only spending 600 hours and whatever else she's doing, mm -hmm. you know, as far as uh, activity, mm -hmm. part-time somewhere, whatever the case is, then she could qualify. What is uh, considered appropriate documentation for that? Is that, I mean, are you getting paid from anything mm -hmm. from there, from the real estate portfolio, or what, what's proper documentation? Yeah, so documentation for this purposes, <clears throat> for the 750 hours, is just a log. That's a log. what I said. Yeah, okay. have a log. You're logging in your time that you're spending because that's what the IRS is going to be looking for, is that you are spending the time in that activity so that you can qualify for that real estate professional. Now, what that means, if you do qualify, mm -hmm. so in my example before, if I have a, a $10,000 loss on my property, now I can take that 10,000 and not use it against passive income, I can use it against ordinary income. Gotcha. Now, where this gets ramped up a little bit more, and I don't wanna to get too deep in the weeds, so if I have my, my vacation property is now a rental property, mm -hmm. and I, let's say I bought it for a million dollars, I can have what we call a cost segregation done on it. We talked about this here, I think, a month or two ago. Yeah, a couple episodes back. Yeah, mm -hmm. and so um, a cost segregation is where an engineer takes a look at your, your building, and instead of you depreciating it over 39 years or, or, or 27 and a half years, um, you get to do so, you get to accelerate it. So like the air conditioners, the flooring, the windows, all that kind of stuff uh, has a shorter life, so you get to accelerate that depreciation. So let's say, for example on my, uh, the million dollar uh, beach house. Mm -hmm. Let's say my accelerated depreciation is now $200,000. If I didn't meet this criteria for the real estate professional, I'd have to just eat at that a little bit each and every year until it's all used up. Well, if I'm a real estate professional, that $200,000 can offset my ordinary income. Mm. So let's say I made $300,000, now I use that deduction. Now I only pay taxes on hundred thousand. That's convenient. Yeah, that's nice. convenient. Yeah. That's nice. Yeah. So going back to um, meeting your material participation standard, mm -hmm. can you and your spouse both combine your time to make it qualified? Yeah, you can. So you know, all, well, now that's the material participation sure. rules. That's not mm -hmm. the real estate profession because one, gotcha. you have to be designated as a real estate professional. Okay. But the material participation in the uh, the building itself, the absolutely, and then of course that has some criteria in there. Um, you know, all the work is related to the property. Uh, you spend more than 100 hours dealing with the property. Uh, and then, of course, spend more than 500 hours dealing with the property. Uh, so that's the uh, three most likely ways to qualify for that. Okay, awesome. What are the things as far as um, with the, the whole rental and personal property, any other things that you would want to cover with, with our viewers today on this? Um, you know, the biggest <clears throat> thing here, that if you are going to use your vacation property, let's assume that that's the case you want to do, you're doing a VRBO, you're doing a, a Airbnb, whatever the case is, and you're renting out that condo, that, that property on the beach or in the mountains, or whatever the case is, is just make sure that you are optimizing your, your tax planning by making sure that it's properly classified, okay? We don't know what we don't know. So we may go, you know, if, you, if we haven't heard something like this here or your CPA hasn't had this conversation with you, you may go in there and, you know, put it down as a vacation rental when it could very most likely be a personal residence, okay? So mm -hmm. then how, that's, how the taxation comes into play here. Or if you're using it as a vacation rental and you're using it again, uh, you know, for the, the days, the 10%, then of course there's some personal use there that we have to, to accommodate as well. So those are the things here, just making sure you communicate properly with your CPA mm -hmm. of how often you're using it, what the purpose is, okay? So that way there, he or she can make sure it's properly documented. Gotcha. And you know, shameless plug here, if you ever have any questions about that, we do this stuff yeah, well, yeah. every day. So um, like I said, part of what we do is we help our clients get to this point to where, because there's a lot of like what do I do's and how to's and about this stuff. And a lot of CPAs don't really have the time to take care of it. It's nothing against them. Right. It's just that they're looking at your history and, and doing the history taking. And then you need somebody looking front, right? You can only look drive while you're looking forward, not in the rear view the whole time. So well, you bring up a val yeah. very valid point. I mean, it's weekly that I have conversations uh, with folks who have been referred to us or have heard about us in some way that they say, listen, and th listen, uh, this is not a, a dig at any CPA out there. Mm -hmm. They are very busy, very busy. And you know, particularly in certain times of the year, they do not have time uh, generally to dig down into the tax code. I mean, there's 70,000 pages there. So you know, ultimately, is having a proactive tax planning strategy is crucial. So if your CPA doesn't do that, and you will know that because uh, if they're coming with ideas on how to mitigate taxes, mm -hmm. then that's a good sign. Mm -hmm. if, you're say, if you're bringing the ideas to, <laughs> to him or her, which I've heard that before, 
that's probably not a good sign. Or if the the tax planning is to expense everything out. Oh yes, yeah, 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 yeah. So <laughs> that's yes, another one. Yeah, in the business world, I hear that yeah. quite a bit. Oh yeah, yeah, we do tax planning. My CPA calls me and says I got you know this much money that I need to to buy some stuff. Well, that's not really tax planning. That's just you know creating an expense to create a deduction. In particular, if you don't need it. If you need it, that's one thing. But if you don't, that's not a good tax plan. So yeah, absolutely. Anything else? Yeah, not. No, I think that's pretty much it for this week. Um, and just you know, last thing I want to say, you know, we have renamed our, our program to Love America Hate Taxes, and you know, Ryan has one of our shirts on, our first original one. This is our most recent one. So if uh, you make sure you, again, like you said earlier, hit the like, um, share it, and um, and again, if you're interested. And one of our shirts, just let us know. We'll drop one in the mail for you. Just let us know what size. Thanks so much.